Faith, faith without, without works, works is, is dead. dead. That's why we just can't pray to God and expect yeah. things to just happen exactly. and happen to move. Yeah. There's things that There's we have to faith. obey That's through good. the word of God. Don't let the discomfort mm. discourage you from walking in faith that will produce wow. that produces works. We will have our a crown of life at the end wow. and our treasures are stored in heaven. All right, guys, today we're going to tackle Does Faith Alone Save Us? James chapter, chapter 2 tackles this very well, and it's going to be really good. Welcome to Faith and Familia. Let's go. What up, <laughs> Yeah, what's going on? We are in James chapter 2, where we're going to be talking about um, faith and deeds. Mm. So let's get into it. With no further ado, guys, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. Go ahead and share this. But let's get this word out because the word is so important. This message that God has for us all as believers is super important to us. Not only us, but those who follow us, those who see us and that we influence. We have to live not only by words, but through actions. Check this out. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if anyone or someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. Clothes and food, right? If anyone of you says, go, be in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing for their physical need, what good is that? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. Wow. But someone says, this i love this you will have faith i have faith show me your faith without deeds and i'll show you my faith by my deeds you believe there is one god that's right see or no even the demons believe that and they shudder you foolish person do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. And I love this. And the scripture was also fulfilled and said this, Abraham believed God and it was a credit to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You want to be a friend of God? Have faith, but also do what he says. I love this. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone. In the same way was when even Rahab, the prostitute, was considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so is faith without works. So is faith without deeds is dead. If you don't have work accompanied with your faith, what are we doing? Amen. Yes. Ooh, and I smell some coffee right here, y'all. <laughs> this is really good. Babe, let's talk about, let's break down this argument. Why is faith important coupled with works, what we do? Um, I, I think it really reveals like what we believe in. Mm. So if there is faith, there has to be like something behind it, work behind that, right? That's like, right. Uh, that's because right. you believe you have faith in 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 Jesus, then that's gonna produce the works that come with the Holy Spirit when you know when you're living for Christ. Exactly, right? exactly. I can only imagine if Jesus just went out there saying words all the time, eloquent speech and all these different things. The Holy Spirit of God working through him to produce a fruit that would actually draw people. Because if work isn't happening, even from the standpoint of a tree, if a tree doesn't produce fruit, no one is ever going to be attracted to the tree just by being there looking cute. No, the fruit is the actual sustenance and nutrients that goes exactly. into the other person to give them the value that they need. So things have to work. It has to happen. Just like I have faith that, you know, that I want coffee, that, you know, that there's coffee. Yeah. I have to put in the work, right? Mm. Faith alone is not enough That's to right. me. For me to say, you know, I want coffee or, you know, I, I know I can get a cup of coffee, but I don't put the work in, then there's no, exactly. there's nothing. You have to put the work in it. Faith produces 
works. And you know what's wild about that? My wife, basically, she loves when coffee goes from the farm to the table. And it was a lot of work being done before you even started to work on this coffee to get this coffee to where it is today. Yes. A farmer had to get be out there plucking and pulling and even taking it to, through a process through different seasons to get it to where it is now. Therefore, exactly. my wife wouldn't even enjoy making the coffee to what it is right now if, come on, someone else didn't do the work. Right, and just as I made this pour over right now, it took time for me yeah. to really make the whole preparation. There's a process to it and it requires work. That's right. <laughs> but yes, this is not gonna be all about coffee, but it's just how like the Lord just spoke to me as making coffee is a process and it, it is a work that has to be done, yep. then it just spoke to me in that way. But yeah, so it says, if one of you says to them, go in peace, keep mm -hmm. warm and well fed, but does not do anything about their physical needs, then what good is it? So it's like, like we've shared before in different videos, if you see someone in need and you, you say that you have faith, that like you believe in God, yeah. like you love Jesus and all of that, but you see someone needy and you just walk past them and do nothing about it, which it is an opportunity to practice your faith. That's right. Um, then and you ignore them completely, then what what kind of faith are you? Those are, are that your faith is dead, right? Work yeah. without, what is it? Faith, faith without, without works, works is dead. dead. That's why obedience is so important. Here's one thing that I'll say, and I'll make it crystal clear, is when we pray to God, prayer isn't the thing that brings forth success. Even in uh, jo Joshua chapter one, it talks about this. It says, blessed is he, you know, who meditates on the word day and night, for he will be prosperous and successful in all that he does. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's not just about your prayer to God. It's about your obedience to God. Once you meditate on his word and you do what it says, success is there. And that's why we just can't pray to God and expect yeah. things to just happen exactly. and happen to move. Yeah. There's things that There's we have things. to obey that's through good. the word of God. Yes, we have to walk. Many times like God has shown us something and we're like, well, I only have this, God. How am I supposed to um, do what you're telling, calling me to do if I don't even have what, what it needs? But that's God right. is wanting you to use what you already have, what he has given you and walk in faith. That's like right. it says, walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. And even before in, in chapter one, it talked about listening and doing. Wow. So it, it's all about, you know, really like just walking by faith and not by sight and really um, trusting that God has already given you what you need in this season and this time to to walk out to work towards where he wants you to go. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's so good. And I love the story of Rahab in this book. In the same way, he was like not even Rahab, the prostitute cons considered righteous for well, she wasn't considered righteous for what you know she heard or what a preacher said or essentially what she ever said she was considered righteous by what she did when yeah. the spies came banging on her door and they were sitting there and they were like rahab rahab where are these men where did they go she sent them in a whole different direction some people might say like she lied you know and i think god had an overarching purpose for her to point them in a different direction righteously because it was to protect God's people. By all means, we need to protect God's flock. We need to protect God's people, the prophets and the people that God has assigned us to. And I think she was in a great place because she listened to the voice of God, even if it was perceived, perceived to break the laws of men. Wow, yeah, you know, she so had faith. That's yes. faith, the, that's powerful. I think the Bible is full of stories of people that, that um have faith really and the work was there too yeah um couples. yeah it was coupled together it was not one without the other like noah did you talk about noah yeah how noah oh built, not yet noah no. built the ark by faith i mean mm. can you imagine the enormous task that god had asked him to build an ark that big and all that he needed for i don't know how many years he was building that ark. i can't remember right now yeah. but that requires a lot of faith and works and even people were making fun of him because it was like you're building this ark because yeah. you know god is Who saying is that he's gonna god? flood the earth and and you know he's gonna end with humanity here um, but yeah, Noah obeyed God. He had faith and he did the work, faith and works. And what it was it accredited And it as? saves them, yeah. What was it accredited as? Righteousness. Righteousness, yes. And here's the beautiful thing. I want you, because this is practical. This is something you need to think about in your own life. 
what is something right now that God is causing, calling you to sacrifice? What is he calling you to do? A thing, it's, it's something tangible. God is calling you to step out in faith and do. I want you to think of that right now. Matter of fact, write it in the comments below. What is God calling you to step out and do? Because that will be the thing that essentially gets you the blessing. Obedience, what proceeds blessing is obedience. You want to be blessed, be obedient, and the success will be there. Mm. It's built into the system. That's good. That's good. Yeah, it says that um, a person is considered righteous by what they do mm. and not by faith alone. Wow. And I know there's a scripture here in the in the Bible and, and we'll end this where it talks about, you know, like works alone can't save you. You know how mm. people say like right. uh, that your works can't save you. And that's true. Like our works cannot save us because if not, then we'd be boasting about like all the things that we did for God. Yeah. And, and that's why it's saying that faith and works. So both of them. Yeah, we'll both share, share really quick. I, you know, one of us, we have to share a story. Well, we're saved by grace through faith. Through faith. That's yes. it. And it is not of works. Of works. So, so that, that no, no man, no man may, may boast. That's what You're it is. You're not saved yes. by that. Salvation, the sanctification, and living a life that's blessed according to, you know, the Lord. That's a whole other thing. It produces works. It produces. Yeah. When yeah. you live for Jesus, like the faith and just his, him changing you produces works. It's a work of the spirit that leads totally. you to do what he's called you to. Yo creo que todos personas escuchando ahora necesitan entiendo okay. mi okay. <laughs> practicando español. Pero really quick, babe, I want to share real quick. When we were out in Dallas yeah. and I heard from the Lord, we heard from the Lord because there was initial things that were pointing for our family to move to Columbia. And it was the time we were with, you know, Bill High, there was some things going on at the location down in Oklahoma City where they were doing like a family legacy type of retreat. And they began to, you know, speak to us about generations and uh, legacy, legacy and things like that. And it made us introspective. We asked the critical question, are we in the position that we feel like God has called us to be. And we started talking back and forth about moving to Latin America, which we're in Medellin, Colombia right now, y'all. Yeah. And now we're just experiencing some of the fruit of just obedience and, and, and moving forward in what God has for us. And it's just amazing because there was a million things telling us to stay in the States. Comfort. But, yeah, comfort, convenience. Convenience um, and familiarity. Familiarity, which faith is often contradictory to that. And yeah. God will most of the time call you away from that. But there are seasons where he sets you down in a place where you refresh and you're in the familiar thing to do things that are common. But listen, God sets us apart sometimes, most of the time for non-common use to do things that are radical and outside of the norm. And for us, it was just that. And we've been able to experience so much blessing. Guys, I lost like 30 pounds. And that's one of the highlights of my life now. It's yeah. like, I've lost like 30 pounds living here. Our marriage has gotten so much better, right? <laughs> please, yeah. please, please, please. Okay. <laughs> um, like, but that's, that's, and even our kids, our kids are, Thriving, they're having school outside, <laughs> Hilarious. And all kind of wild thing. This guy. But yeah, yeah, I'm just saying thank you, God, for just showing that <laughs> when we literally do what you say and we sacrifice those areas uh, that we don't necessarily think is comfortable and move <laughs> out of the faith realm to actually doing what we feel are in sense and have been convicted that the Lord has said, yes. the fruit comes from it. Yes, yes. So, yeah, yeah, so that's no. been really cool. We've we, we've been able to grow as a family and have our kids in a different environment where they are growing too. They're growing in their faith and they're challenged to grow in a different culture that's and right. embrace the different kinds of people and foods and and all of that. And and they can see how God has led us mm. here and they're able to give thanks to for where we were, but you know, to where we are now. Um, and you know, opportunities to serve and do different We're things. So born our kids now. Yeah. Like never before. Mm -hmm. And I think as we keep walking in faith, the Lord will continue to show us more 
But for now, we've been able to like rest a little bit more too because we have a little bit of help with the kids. That's and, right. And it doesn't feel like everything is on us. We but, actually get yeah. time together. Yeah. Well, to even stay even more committed to each other and our needs. I love, I absolutely love the blessing that came with us moving here. Yeah. But with that being said, what do you think God is blessing you from right now, from the not only faith, but that faith couple with works? What is God showing in your life that you were obedient to, that you now see the fruit of? Write in the comments. Want to hear more about that? Yes. We're about to close out. Yes. Uh, but this has been amazing. Any last final thoughts or? Uh, I think one last thing I wanted to say is that faith. When we when you're practicing your faith and and, and you know with the whole works deal it is uncomfortable it, it isn't always going to feel great and exciting and mm. yay like this is the best thing ever because it, it is going to require a part of you it, it's going to require to practice a part of you that you're not used to that's right like putting aside your flesh and actually like walking by faith like sometimes it's painful sometimes it feels great but sometimes it doesn't and so don't let the discomfort mm. discourage you from walking in faith that will produce wow. that produces works that's um good. Remember that everything that we do is unto the Lord and uh, is for his glory. And we will have our, our crown of life at the end wow. and our treasures are stored in heaven. So just keep your, your focus on Jesus and remain just having your perspective on him and yeah. kingdom. That's but right. we love you guys and we will be praying for you. Leave your prayer request. We love this community. I hope that you guys are enjoying these videos. Um, thank you for being a part of Faith and Familia. Yeah. And if you're on the podcast side, come to the YouTube. Go check out the actual video. If you're on the YouTube side and you want to go on the commute, right? Listen, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the places you get YouTube podcasts. Mm -hmm. Jump over there, y'all. Let's get it. Vamos. Dios te bendiga siempre. God bless you guys. Ciao, ciao.